What's going on YouTube? This video is dedicated to Rob Q based on a conversation that we had on Twitter not too long ago. And um, really it's dedicated to everyone who's had these type of run-ins, whether in person or uh, indirectly through social media. Seems like um, Paul in particular um, is constantly disrespected. You know, his writings, um, reality the gospel the new testament and because of that uh through the disrespect of the apostle paul and the rejection of paul so is the rejection of christ because christ himself said that those who don't accept his uh, disciples who eventually became apostles uh, those who reject his disciples reject him and those who reject christ rejects the one who sent christ and a lot of people uh, I've seen a lot of this in the, you know, Hebrew community. Uh, a lot of people, they take the opportunity to then disrespect Christians because, of course, you know, Christianity and Catholicism, they've been doing a lot of twisting and, and lying. But, you know, at the same time, it's upon us to read the book that has always been in our homes for decades. And people just prefer to go to church on Sundays and act holy but never once spend time with the book. So, you know, it's only but so far we can blame institutions. But with that said, um, people decide not to deal with the institutions, but blame like quote unquote Christians, like they take the people. And um, they're under the same spell, if you will, as if, you know, just like many of the Hebrews that just came out of the spell, because a lot of these you know, Hebrews who talk crazy about Christians uh, or others who talk crazy about other, you know, sects or, or groups of people, they were once those people, right? But um, I'm really noticing how Paul is being attacked and uh, people are quoting Peter and Peter's verse saying that, you see, these Christians, they don't understand that Paul is, is a stumbling block. Uh, for them and they don't understand Paul's writings yet they themselves don't understand Paul's writings because if they did they would not be in the old covenant because the old covenant is finished it's been finished for thousands of years but um I want to go through this because I want to show people who have these type of situations how they can defend the bible without even using any of Paul's writings right so um, this gentleman said the Christian church cringes when it hears such things as Sabbath, Israel, Passover, Ten Commandments. None of these are Jewish things. They are all God's things that he gave to his people. Who are you? And I said ordinances like Sabbath and Passover, for example, are not required in the New Testament because it's not. It was not commanded anywhere in the Old Testament to keep the Sabbath or the Passover. It said that people who would like to keep a day like the Sabbath or people who would like to observe any days, let them be fully convinced in their heart, right? But it's not a commandment. It was explained in the book of Romans. And the Passover, sh that should not be celebrated as a holy day because Christ is the ultimate Passover. If Christ was a sacrifice to fulfill the old covenant and bring in the new, then what are you doing sacrificing lambs and eating it if Christ is the Passover for you to enter into salvation. Probably because the old covenant is finished. Probably, right? So, um, I state that these things are done. The ordinances are done. And Christ is literally the Passover. These ordinances were fulfilled and are no longer, as the Bible states. Brother Q says that he encourages me to study this topic more using the Bible. And not just parts of Paul's letters. It's not an attack, just advice is all. I don't understand that because Paul's letters is part of the Bible. When did Paul's letters and the Bible become separate things? And this is what I mean by the constant attack on Paul because Satan, he's 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 a shrewd, he's savvy, you know, when he wants to. He's not just solely a lion looking to devour anything in his path. You know, he can come very subtle with things and you may not recognize it. And this is one of those subtleties, you know, 
because Paul is a major contributor of the gospel. So if you attack Paul, you're attacking the gospel. And Christ said, again, if you reject the apostles, not don't, don't pick and choose an apostle. He said the apostles, meaning all of them. And if you reject them, you reject Christ. And if you reject Christ, you reject the person who sent Christ. So folks who reject Paul, they don't understand what they're doing. So I said, wait, Paul wrote the book of Jeremiah, in particular, Jeremiah 31, 31 and 40. That's news to me. Well, of course, Paul didn't write Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrote Jeremiah. And in uh, Jeremiah 31, 31, 40, it clearly shows. The days are coming, declares the Lord. This is a prophecy. When I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. So it's not just the northern kingdom, not just the southern kingdom. It's the entirety of the tribes, all of the descendants of Abraham and Jacob, right? It will not it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Now, this is very important because we had multiple covenants in the Old Testament. We had the covenant of promise that was given to Abraham and extended to Jacob. And then we had the covenant that was made with our ancestors when they were taken out of Egypt, which is called the Mosaic Covenant. Let me show you something. The covenant of promise. The covenant of promise made with Christ as seed of Abraham. This was the very first covenant made. This was made with Christ and Abraham. Then you had the uh, Sin Sinaitic law, Mount Sinai, or the Mosaic law. And this did not, it did not disannul the covenant of of promise. This is an everlasting uh, covenant. This one had particular do's and don'ts, right? And if you broke it, there were consequences. If you kept them, there were fruits. This is what is explained in Deuteronomy 28, right? And then, of course, you go to the purpose of the law. So as you can see, we have two different covenants in the old covenant and this is important because a lot of times people quote scriptures and they don't understand that they are quoting two different covenants thinking that they're they're precepting or supporting arguments for the mosaic law and they are not they are they are wrongfully dividing the the words and the the scripture they are wrongfully dividing scripture is what they're doing, right? But let me continue. He says, this is still waiting uh, full fulfillment if you read it, meaning this prophecy, right? And it is coming if those ordinances depart from me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Now, he thinks that this is talking about the Mosaic law, when we know in Deuteronomy 28, the, you know, fruits or the consequences for either maintaining or breaking the law. Right? Let's go back. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel at that time. Matter of fact, matter of fact let me go back. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Because they broke my covenant, this covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. The Lord. This is the covenant that they broke. The Mosaic one. The one that was given to the ancestors when uh, Christ took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. And then furthermore, it says, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord. What is that covenant? The new covenant that is not like the old covenant. This, this, Paul didn't write that, right? So 
he quotes this, but he mis misquotes it and then says the terms of the covenant are still the same, the Ten Commandments, which this is this is not the covenant. This is not. These are Ten Commandments. This is not the Mosaic Covenant, and this is not the Covenant of Promise. The, the Mosaic Law has 613 law, statutes, and commandments. The Covenant of Promise has promises, right? Such as giving the land, or, you know, once the people are, they turn from Christ, if they turn back to Christ, or, or to the Lord, he will accept them. They are promises. People need to understand the difference in the covenants, right? So I responded, you said we're still waiting on full fulfillment. Then he quoted this. So I wasn't sure if he was saying like, if in order for this to be fully fulfilled, then that means that Israel needs to cease from being a nation before Christ, uh, before the, uh, the Lord forever. So I asked like a question, what hasn't been fulfilled? And to please provide script because people like to give opinion a lot. They like to give opinion. And that's not what we should be into. We've had enough of that. That's what's been going on in the churches. And this is why so many people are, are not in church anymore. You know, at least the people who are serious. Right. Then he says, well, verse 34. Verse 34 says, no longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Who does, who does this? That sounds like Christ, right? Right? I said, I'm glad you said that. What did Christ say in Matthew 23 and 8? Let's find out what he says. But you are not to be called rabbi or teacher, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. This brother, Brother Q, just said that this verse was not fulfilled because I asked him what hasn't been fulfilled. He said, well, verse four, uh, 34, for example, and they shall teach no more. Christ told them, but you are not to be called rabbi. That The Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, the Essenes, all that is finished. Because remember, Christ is not just the... Um, the Messiah, but he's also the head priest. He took the priesthood from the Levites. He is the king of kings. He is the highest of high priests. He is the teacher now. He teaches us. This is the whole purpose of the new covenant. Brothers just said that this wasn't fulfilled. The first book of the New Covenant, uh, uh, of the New Testament, says otherwise. This is the very first book. This is the book of Matthew. Right? So, when I provide that, I said, please note, I haven't quoted Paul's writings. Because, you know, Paul, they, they like to pick on Paul. Right? And stop picking on Brother Paul. Paul's looking out for a lot of people because he did the work that was charged to him, that Christ charged him to do in the book of Acts. So people need to put some respect on Paul's name because he went out there, put his life on the line. People are talking greasy about him on Twitter thousands of years later. You know, when people are searching to kill you and, 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 you know, the, the safest place for you to be is in a Roman prison, <laughs> you know, then you'll know the difference between what Paul had to do and what people write on Twitter. Right. So he says, what is the point you are trying to make here? And I said that Jeremiah 31, 34, uh, 31 and 40 was fulfilled, meaning that the new covenant that isn't like the Mosaic.
It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. This is what the prophet Jeremiah said, right? Is in effect, and I didn't have to quote one letter from Paul to prove that. All I had to do is use the Old Testament prophet, which is Jeremiah and Christ himself, his own words, right? Would you like me to continue without using Paul? Because I can, I, I can do things like this, right? Let me go here. Since he mentioned the Passover. Now, these are the instructions for the Passover, right? This is Exodus 12. These are instructions. So in order for you to fulfill the instructions of the Passover, you have to follow the instructions, right? Now, it says, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, they must... Each select an animal of the flock according to their father's households, one animal per household. These are instructions. If the household is too small for a whole animal, that person and the neighbor nearest his house are to select one based on the combined number of people. You should apportion um, the animal according to each person, uh, what each person will eat. You must have an unblemished animal. Listen, listen. You must have an unblemished animal, a year old male. You just can't eat a female. You have to have a male. You have to take it from either the sheep or the goat. So it doesn't matter, right? It could be a sheep or a goat. You have to keep it until the 14th day of this month, the first month of the, the Hebrew calendar. Then, then the whole assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter the animals at twilight. People are going to supermarkets, going to oriental markets. They're buying lamb and they're cooking it and they're thinking they're holding Passover. This is the instructions for Passover, right? They must take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the house where they eat them. They are to eat the meat that night. They should eat it roasted over the fire along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or cooked in boiling water, but only roast over fire, its head as well as its legs and inner organs. You have to cook the whole thing, the whole goat or sheep. You can't just buy like lamb chops, and think that you're keeping Passover. Do not let any of it remain until morning. You must burn up any part of it that does remain before morning. How many people, after they buy their lamb chops, right? <clears throat> like, never mind the fact that you have to have the whole lamb, organs and everything, head and everything, right? Um, how many people then go out to a backyard. Many people don't even have a backyard. They live in the city. And they're burning the rest before twilight. See, people like to play this game like, well, the old covenant is still in uh, order, but Christ basically, in terms of the ordinances, basically uh, eradicated the uh, sacrifices. Like, you don't have to sacrifice at the uh, temple because they know that the doctrine the doctrine is weak because you can't say that the old covenant is in order you that you can still practice it if we don't have a temple if you can't sacrifice so they say hey you know all of the other ones you have to do but you can't do the sacrifices because christ took care of that when he was sacrificed because they they like to call that a renewal of the covenant where there is no such thing. There is no script that says renewal. There is no renewal. You have the old and you have the new. And in order to introduce a covenant, there must be a sacrifice. That is the facts here. But even if they, even if that was the case, they still have a problem because now when you go through the instructions on how to keep Passover or unleavened bread, when it says that you have to be in the land, how are you supposed to do that? Matter of fact, if we don't even deal with Passover, let's deal with things such as tithings. 
when you have to present the tithings, you everybody has to get together in the land uh, of Jerusalem, for example, and then they have to present their offering for tithing, give the Levitical priest their portion, and then they'll all eat. So even if you're not even dealing with Passover, how are you keeping that commandment of tithing? You can't do it with money because you it's food. You, so everybody gets a portion. And you have to make sure that the Levitical priests gets, get their portion. They didn't say pastors or, or preachers get a portion. They said the Levitical priest gets a portion. How can you keep the commandment of the 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 tithing if nobody even knows like via lineage who the levitical priests are out of control man out of control so instead of answering my question he goes and says uh first chronicles 16 15 17 teen, be mindful always of his covenant the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. What do you think the covenant of promises that was given to Abraham and passed down to Isaac and passed down ultimately to Jacob, right? So I explained, this is not the Mosaic law, because I said, except both Abraham and Isaac lived long before, hundreds of years before Moses was even born, thus the Mosaic law. They lived and were long gone before Moses was even a thought, right? Because remember, Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had all of the sons who created the tribes. So these are the, the, the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is why you always hear Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't hear Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses. And there's a reason for that, because Moses is a Levite. He's the brother of Aaron. And the Levitical priest came through Aaron's line. Moses is a Levite. He cannot be the father of all of um, Israel or the Hebrews, or I can't say the Hebrews because they are Hebrews that are not Israelites, but all of the, the Israelites if he's specifically a Levite. But Abraham can be because he is the father of Isaac, and Isaac is the father of Jacob, and Jacob is the father of all of the tribes. Moses is a son within a tribe. He is the starting one, him and his brother, of the Levitical priest, but he's still the son of Jacob, still the son of Isaac, still the son of Abraham, because these are the fathers of many nations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a different covenant. So he says, no, I'm showing you that God's covenant do not end. He, he's correct, but he has the wrong covenant. This covenant of promise does not end. The covenant, the Mosaic covenant clearly had in Deuteronomy 28, how you can uh, be fruitful within the covenant or what happens if you break it. Everybody knows what the word break mean, right? So he says, that it doesn't end. I said, well, Hosea 6 and 7. As at Adam, they have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. And I said, this verse proves otherwise. The Mosaic law was broken. And he says, they broke the covenant terms. Yes, hence why God divorced the northern kingdom. Well, you see, you see, this is wordplay here because he says, hence, this is why God divorced the northern kingdom. The prophet Jeremiah did not say just the northern kingdom. He said the people of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and the people of Judah. I don't know, man. He says Deuteronomy tells you the results of keeping or breaking the covenant. This is true. 
But this is not the covenant of promise. This has to do with the covenant, the Mosaic covenant, a different covenant. So I said, so if you know the results of keeping or breaking the covenant, then how could you sit here and say that the old covenant is everlasting if you can indeed break it? I know that you know what break means, right? He says, I am not saying it is everlasting. God is. Take it up with him. And he, he provides Psalms 105, 6, and 8. And I said, question, was the Mosaic law around when Abraham and Isaac were living? And the reason why I asked that is because he provided Psalms 105, 6, and 8, which says the offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Right? And I said, your answer is going to be no, because we all know that Abraham and Jacob were around long before the Mosaic law. So I said, since we already know this, then why are you incorrectly dividing the scripture? Why are you trying to associate one covenant with the Mosaic law and trying to make it seem that because this one is everlasting, that that associates with the Mosaic law? And all of the people, so many people who claim that, quote unquote, Christians or, or people who are unlearned in the in the Bible who have Paul as a stumbling block, these same people do things like this, where they take they divide scripture incorrectly and they take a little bit of the Mosaic law and then say that the Mosaic law is still active by quoting scripture that has to do with the the uh, covenant of promise, a completely different covenant. And then want to turn around and tell other people that Paul is their stumbling block. As people who, who study and understand this can see clear as day that these people don't know what they're talking about. Right? And it's okay to reprove people because this is how you're supposed to correct people so people can get onto the right path. But for some reason, it's the flesh. Of, the flesh don't like to be corrected. Right? So he said, I would argue that Abraham learned God's commandments, but that is a longer discussion. And I stopped, I stopped reading right there. I stopped reading right there. And I responded, I'm not concerned about your arguments. I'm not talking about arguments and people's opinions. <clears throat> I'm asking you for scripture. This is scripture. But that has nothing to do with the Mosaic Covenant. This is a different covenant, you know. So um, I'm not providing you my arguments. I'm providing you scripture, right? You should be showing by example those who study the Bible, given your encouragement, meaning he encouraged me to, to study. And this brother here, he cannot defend this doctrine because the doctrine is false, right? He says, I gave you scripture and you ignore it. I, I'm not ignoring it. I'm correcting him, right? I'm correcting Brother uh, Rob Q. Because he, like so many other people, who like to tell people about Paul and, and their writings, they, they themselves need to also study. People who do this, right? Because they, they take... Scripture that has nothing to do with a particular covenant, but an, an older covenant. And then say that it represents the Mosaic law. It doesn't. No matter how many times people want to say it, no matter how many times people say that they, they provide scripture and people ignore it. No. People are ignoring the correction. All right. And I said you provided scripture to support your Mosaic law by presenting scripture that talks about men that predates Moses and the Mosaic law by hundreds of years. This is true by maybe four or 500 years, right? For, for Jacob, at least, right? I think, I don't know how many years for Abraham, you might as well have thrown Joseph in the mix as well, because of course, Joseph was under that same promise when he was in Egypt, right? When, when his brother's, uh, threw him down the well, then got him out the well, and then sold him, and then he went into Egypt, and then came uh, viceroy, then saved all of Egypt from the famine. Where was the, the Mosaic Covenant then? We got to wisen up, man. 
Psalm 105, he, he's quoting it again. What? The Psalm even talks about Moses in it. He doesn't understand. Brother, family, read Psalm 105, 9, and, it will, and you will see that the particular covenant that he quoted, because remember, he went 5, 6 to 8, he didn't get to 9. This particular covenant that you're, uh, you've been quoting is the covenant given to Abraham, not Moses. It's okay to learn something, you know? And he says in verse 10, which he confirmed to be Jacob as a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant. He doesn't understand. You're talking about a different covenant. It's a different covenant. Remember the law of my servant Moses. The statues and rules, yes. Yes. This is old, old testament. Now he's quoting something that has something to do with the Mosaic law. But we already know that that comes with conditions, which Deuteronomy 28 already presented. So you can break that uh, law. And Jeremiah states that once that was broken, because he prophesied that it would happen, what would occur afterwards, which wasn't a renewal. Because Jeremiah knew that people would say things like this. So he made sure to say that it will not be like the one that was given to our ancestors when they were taken out of Egypt. So people cannot have this excuse. Right? Then he goes and he, he just like, he's not dealing with anything that I'm presenting. He's just... It's just the usual, just quoting quotes, quotes, and it's just, and I'm asking, please stop muddying the waters. I've provided multiple scriptures without quoting Paul. That the covenant that you claim is in effect, Mosaic is not, but you think so because you keep confusing the covenant of promise given to Abraham, which is a different covenant. You see, but a second ago, he said that I was ignoring this and no, I'm trying to correct this brother. He's confusing covenants. He doesn't take this. He, he just, he's, he's, quote, he's quoting. He's, he's incorrectly dividing scripture. And then when he says, Deuteronomy 4, 30, 31, when thou art in tribulation and all these things come upon thee, even in the latter days. So he's thinking, okay, because he uses fingers to point to the latter days, Meaning that, well, the covenant must still be in effect because it says the latter days, right? If thou turn to God and shall be obedient unto his voice, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them, right? So I said, exactly. Didn't God tell Abraham, not Moses, that he will make this covenant with him and make Abraham, father of many nations. That's Genesis 17, 4 and 7. Let's go to that. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, Abraham, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. King David, King Solomon, Saul, Jeroboam, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in your in their generations. Isaac, Jacob, the forefathers, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. So even if we rejected the Mosaic law and and got paid uh, uh, and had to, you know, deal with a with a heavy burden because of that. He's letting you know, even in the latter days, Rob Q, that if you turn back to him, he will not forsake you because he's remembering the covenant of thy fathers. Who are the fathers? Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It's not Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Moses. It's not. You have never heard Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses. 
You've never heard it because Moses is not the father of many nations. He is the father of the Levitical priesthood. One tribe, him and his brother Aaron, they are Levites. It's a different covenant. So I said, I'm going to argue with someone who is this unlearned piece, you know, so, you know, he doesn't, he, he's ignoring. Then he does this. And I said, look, I encourage you to study peace. Folks, if you notice, not one time did I have to go into any of Paul's writings. And all I had to do was deal primarily in the Old Testament, dealing with the prophet Jeremiah. And anytime I went into the new, I quoted Jesus. And to, to further prove that the old covenant, you can't keep it just to show how you can't do the Passover. People are not doing that correctly. And if you break one commandment in the Old Testament, it's equivalent to breaking all of them. That's quoted in, in scripture, right? As well as not being able to do... Uh, tithing because you're not in the land you don't know who the Levitical priests are to, for them to get their portion the the people are not together how, how how are we doing this people are getting confused the Ten Commandments thinking that that is the Mosaic law people are getting confused the covenant of promise thinking that they who are quoting or getting precepts that is relevant to that covenant is relevant to the Mosaic law when people think that the old covenant is only the Mosaic law. And these are the same folks who will turn around and, and either reject Moses or tell people who quote, uh, not Moses will reject Paul and, and, and disrespect folks who understand Paul when they don't even realize that they are proving Peter, right? They think that the people that they're pointing to are the one who, Who's the stumbling block? Who, who Paul's the stumbling block for when they don't even realize that their misunderstanding and rejection of Paul is going to have them taking a, a, a swim in a lake of fire? Because if you reject the apostles, you reject Christ. And if you reject Christ, you reject the person who sent them. Till next video.